All right, Black Box Radio. Today we're in the Rona Report, of course, and we have Miss Yolanda with us. Miss Pulley is a uh, 2020 mayoral can- um, Democratic mayoral candidate for Baltimore City. How are you doing, Miss Pulley? I'm blessed as always. Blessed as always. I love that. Yeah, I'm too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. Wow. Okay. I like that too. <laughs> so let me ask you, um, we know that you're camp- you were campaigning. I'm sure that that has been shut down at this point, but um, tell the people what you actually do in the community. Um, actually, I do a lot. Um, um, first and foremost, um, I'm a tenant advocate. I fight for tenants' rights and responsibilities. I also do frontline mm-hmm. work. I go out there and I hand out food. I hand out face masks. I hand out gloves because um, I just don't feel like we are taking it serious enough to know that eventually this might be our norm. So I go out there mm-hmm. and I, I try to convince people to, you know, either, you know, shelter in or, you know, basically put a glove, put the gloves and the mask on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do a lot of I do a lot of stuff. It's just not one thing that I do when the schools is open, I would go in and I would fight, fight for children who's being bullied against, whether it's a principal, a teacher, a student, or I'll go into our senior communities and I'll ask them, what is it that we can do for you? It's, it's just not a one thing with Yolanda. I just do frontline work all the way around. So Yolanda is a community stabilizer all the time, all, all the, time. the time. Got it. Not sometimes. And also a candidate for mayor. Yeah, I do my frontline work first because it's not about me, it's about the people. <laughs> so I people get say, it. I get people it. say okay. when I go out there and I help people and I do this, that and that, they'll be like, Oh, I seen you on TV, you're running for me. I say, Yes, I am, but this is not why I'm here. I don't want nobody to get that confused about what I actually do. I'm revolutionary and I I, I stand up for people. So I don't want them to get that in the way because I don't want the recognition, I don't want the um gratification. I just do the work. You just do the work. Love it. Love it. We need a grind and mayor around out here. That's exactly what we need. All right. So, um, so we hear that you and so in the community, are is there? Do you see a lot of social because you're working in the black community? Because let's give context. Is you know people listen to this in Singapore, sis. So we gotta have. Um, so you're saying in the black community, they're not really taking it serious. Do you feel that is going on in the community in Baltimore right now? Absolutely. Um, I'll just, if I'm riding by, I'll just jump out my car and I'll ask people like, what are you doing? So people are not taking it serious for some reason. It's a, it's a mis, it's a misinformation going around that black people cannot get it. And I'm going out there and I'm telling people we're not exempt. We can get it too. Mm-hmm. And I really wish that they start putting it out there of, uh, you know, the stats of black people and, and, and children and elderly people who's come in contact and who's dying and who's surviving I need them to put that out there because they're not evidently if black people in communities think that they won't get it. And I think that's why all these people are outside because they think Mm -hmm. that they cannot get it. Yep. And young people, it is terrible messaging by the people who control the message. They have not been wholly um, honest and they have not been forthright. They should have been breaking this down at this point by age, by race, any time that if if someone if it was fifty people that got killed in this building, they would have all the races, all the ages. You know what I mean? Absolutely. They need to do the same thing for this virus, so people can understand that from zero to two hundred, you will die. Exactly. And if and if you have underlying issues, let me help you. If you got diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, these underlying health issues that you've suffered for years and your, your body's compromised, you go quickly. And our community is full of diabetes and high blood pressure. Absolutely. And they're men. Yeah, so we got to get out of that. And if you look at the numbers, we are dying two times more than everybody. Yeah, we're fighting coronavirus. Uh, virus. We're fighting a virus. We're fighting against, we're fighting against a lot. And I don't think that... Um, us as us as black and people. Baltimore, the murder rate I'm here. Right. So yes. I mean, we should not have to. Our death should not have to go either through a coronavirus or violence. I'm sorry. I mean, we should be living our age up to the young people should live and live, be living up to our age too. And I tell um, mm-hmm. when I was out there handing out face masks um, yesterday, and um, I was handing them out to children 
because I seen children flying up and down on Fulton Avenue on bikes. And I said, please put yeah. this on. And their parents is over mm. there drinking beer on the steps and, and everybody, kiki, kaka. And I'm like, oh, my God, do we not yes. understand the severity of this? And they're not mm-hmm. understanding it. There's no social no, distancing. I- there's nothing. Mm. We just, I, I think they just think that, what, Baltimore City is on an early break? I don't know. I saw three or four of them today sharing a cigarette. I said, oh, really? My God. Yes. This, this guy standing there was sharing a cigarette. I'm like, really? That's what we're doing? But it's because lack, the messaging and lack of information and people just, I, I just think that people right now, they just want something. Pop. Baltimore is chaotic anyway. Now we have a virus on top of the real virus, which is the murder rate in the city, the disinvestment. I can go all into education. Uh, the food deserts, uh-huh. <laughs> gentrification. Do you want me to keep going, Sister Pulley? No, I, I mean, we can. <laughs> no, I, I understand. <laughs> Trust Rhonda, me. I can keep going. Yeah, we I got can, all I of these. Up. Yes, you can, yeah, you can, can put some in there. Oh, my God. No, we're not even going to go there. But just like I told people, I said, y'all not taking this serious enough. I said, even if you want to, you know, do sin, self-inflicted nonsense, don't pass it on to the children. Please. Don't pass it on to the children. Make your children go in the house, even if you choose not to. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Say that again. What's it called, sir? What's it, what'd you say? Sin? Say sin. Again? Self-inflicted nonsense. That's what sin is. Listen, self-inflicted nonsense. I, ain't I'm writing that down? All day long. <laughs> Love that. Self-inflicted nonsense. That's true. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you, like, in your mind space, how do you feel in, like, mentally? Because this is a lot to digest. It is. And see, that's why I said that we need leaders in our city that's willing to basically stand up for us because it's no one standing up for us. There's no one from our city official nowhere else going down there and saying, hey, I, this is real. It's serious. I need y'all to disperse and go in the house. This is what you're mm-hmm. supposed to do as a mayor. You're still a frontliner. You're still a public mm-hmm. servant. So it's your job to be out in the communities. If nobody else should put their life on the line, it should be the ones who get paid for it. That's your mayor, your city council. Stop hiding behind a desk. Stop hiding behind social media and get your behind outside on that street. Miss Yolanda, can you tell them how you really feel? Because we don't think they're clear. (laughs) That's how I really feel. I'm really disappointed in our city government. I'm disappointed in our governor because, like I said, the information Mm -hmm. is getting out there wrong. And they're not taking it serious because the governor is not putting it out there serious. For some reason, people's under the conception they have to be in the house at eight o'clock every night. That's not true. You're not supposed to be outside unless you're a central employee going to the market, going to the doctor or something like that. But you have people just everywhere. <sighs> you're saying I, I think in a lot of ways it's so many people saying like, listen, no one's going to listen until they shut it down. Right. This little this little pseudo shutdown or stand in front of people and say we and then everybody's outside. That's not real. They got to shut it down and then have people outside patrolling the shutdown. If you don't do that, they're going to come out. That's My just thing it. Is, and you see, also, it's too pretty outside. People are not going to stay inside. They got their backs out. They got their chest out. They got everything out. And this is pneumonia, whether and that's what the coronavirus is. It's a, it's a pneumonia. My thing is the mayor needs to put a podium in the middle of the street, block off North Avenue, and he needs to stand there and he needs to talk to these people because they're not understanding the severity of this, of what's going on. You can still have social distancing. You have it downtown. Why not have it in a community? The same way you stand in front of City Hall is the same way you can stand on Pennsylvania Avenue or, uh, or Green Mount or anywhere there's a congregated amount of people. That's what I would do, me I th- personally. I think that would help. I think that would help amazingly. I mean, I think if they hear, they see it and you're in their community, it means something. And, you know, people say, well, he's on TV today, but now everybody's watching. The, people sick of television. Wait a minute, but if they're, <laughs> they're outside, how of- are they looking at TV? Thank you. And you know, so that's another thing. People are not staying even inside to even look at television. So even in this virus uh, in this what I would say event that we're in we don't have the proper information to even live in this event so imagine what goes on every day this is a chaotic killer that we have in front of us 
it, it promotes chaos because we don't know how to deal with something that we have no etiology to deal with. And then on top of that, the leaders that are supposed to be the perceptors of the uh, response, th- their messaging is terrible. So we have this, it seems like this double effect of nothing. People don't know what's going on. And then the leaders aren't telling the truth. That's what I feel. Well, I feel the same way. Well, I feel the same way. That's why I said we have to stop being about the money. It has to stop being about Mm -hmm. the money for coronavirus and vaccines, even though we know it's more treatment and I mean, it's more money in the treatment than the cure. But it has to stop Mm. being about the money. It has to start being about the people. If you don't sooner or later, we're not going to Baltimore City is going to be a desert one way or the other. I mean, and we're not looking at the bigger picture here. I mean, once they kill us off, they're coming for you. So you might as well just get it together now. And once we have this stopped and our violence stopped, I promise you the money will come back. The businesses will come back because we'll be a a city of um, vibrant lives again. Mm, so you think this is something that the reason why they're not speaking is because they really want this to happen. Is that it? it that's the way I, I feel. Mean, I don't want to be no conspiracy. Well, I'm not really into conspiracy wow. theory, but the truth needs no support. They're not out here. Miss Yolanda, I, in this interview, we need you to tell us how you really feel. If you want me to really tell you how I really feel, they need to get off their ass and get outside. That's how I really feel. You're collecting our money. That's our money. You work for us. We don't work for you. That's how I feel. So stop making it about these businesses and corporations and start making it about the people. And just because you feel like they don't vote don't mean they don't deserve to live. That's how I really feel. Love it. I mean, and and well said. I mean, there's nothing I could say that is well said. Now, um, so we're at the part of the interview where um, we um, leave a last will and testament. And that is leaving with the people something that's going to inspire them. It could be a jewel. It could be a talent. You know, you might be a heavy rapper. We don't know. But we need you to leave something that will inspire the people at this moment, at this time. I actually wrote a poem about my great Hmm. city of Baltimore. Let's hear it. It's called A Letter to Baltimore. It say the pain in her eyes is the story she tells. Misused and, bu- and abused and she's angry as hell. Cares her passion and she wants to love us long time. While, uh, while her bro- hope broken heart keeps playing the same old rhyme. Love me or leave me is her favorite quote. Her heart skips a beat and, ev- and shattered in every note. Her long hair is as long as the streets and her arms stretch wide like the cross to bear. A four-way intersection as we look. However, there's no one there there to care. We used to sit in her arms as the city it t- that reads, but in a re- reality across the globe, we're the city that cannot succeed. Are we embarrassed mm-hmm. enough to take fight or flight, to stand against our oppressors, whether black or white? We said that we are nobody until the ultimate death. We meet our ultimate ashes to ashes and dirt to dirt. Slow singing, flower bringing, mom's crying while p- placing her babies on the front of a T-shirt. My roots are not being up, being grounded. But however uprooted, broken with no with love no more. Please help ease our pain. Once signed, our city, Lady Baltimore. Lady Baltimore, amazing. Yes, okay, wow, wow. That 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 was a great last one, Testament. We appreciate that, and um, definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much. You? Thank you so much, Lee Yolanda, for joining us and sharing your passion for the people of the city of Baltimore and the insights that you have about the current situation that we are all going through right now. Thank you so much. And sharing that with our community. For the community and people who are listening, make sure that you visit blackboxradio.com. That's B-L-A-K-B-O-X-X-R-A-D-I-O.com to hear all of the voices of the Rona Report. You can, and also all the conversations that we've had on Black Black Box Radio since 91919. You can also find Black Box Radio on Facebook and Instagram at Black Box Radio and on Twitter at Box Black. That's at B-O-X-X-B-L-A-K. Ooh, excellent. So we're in the Rona Report and we just spoke with uh, Ms. Yolanda Pulley. We appreciate you, sis. We really appreciate your your insight and um, everything. And we want you to stay safe 
because you're out here. So please stay safe. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. This is the Roman Report. It's 4820. You're with Black Box Radio. We out. Peace.